Without further ado, let's begin the celebration. We present the class of 2017.
the faculty, administrators, and trustees of Oklahoma City University.
Ladies and gentlemen, will you please rise for the presentation of the colors and remain standing for the national anthem and invocation. The colors are being presented today by cadets Trevor Doherty, Kimberly Martin, and Josie Sanchez from the University of Central Oklahoma, and cadet Lester Joash from Oklahoma Christian University. Our national anthem will be led by Walker Daniel Degerness, who is receiving his Bachelor of Music today from the Bass School of Music. You will find the words to the national anthem on page 40 of this program. This morning's invocation is led by Michelle Dawn Owen, who will be receiving her Bachelor of Arts today from the Wimberley School of Religion. Would you join me in an attitude of prayer? God of wisdom and wonder, God of compassion and calling, God of strength and sorrow, God of laughter and longing, we come to you today with hearts full of gratitude for all that we've been given. We are appreciative of our families, friends, professors, mentors, and others who've supported us in our endeavors of education. We are thankful because we know that we have been granted a privilege that many will never have the opportunity to experience. Yes, God, we are grateful. But we aren't just celebrating an achievement. We are moving on to a new portion of our lives. 
and beginning a new phase, which is unknown to us at this time. When our path seems unclear, help us to rely upon the knowledge that we've gained here and to lean upon the people that have been supportive of us thus far. We are not called to be sojourners, solitary on the way of life, but to be members of communities that help us to be more than we ever thought, dreamed, or imagined. In the name of the one who is, who was, and who will always be, amen. Uh, before I begin, I'd like to thank all the people that made it possible for me to be here today. Thank you to my mom and dad. Without both your emotional and financial support, I could have never had the opportunities I've enjoyed these four years. Thank you for sitting. You get comfortable. <laughs> thank you to my extended family for traveling hundreds of miles just to be able to congratulate me this morning. Thank you to my grandparents for making the trek all the way to Oklahoma City. They once told me they hoped to be at my high school graduation, and I'm so grateful that four years later, at 86 and 90 years old, they've made it to my college graduation. Thank you to all the faculty and staff, um, but thank you specifically to Dr. Mark Griffin in the language department. I did actually not have my language credits until roughly three weeks ago, and without his help, I would still be enrolling in the fall. <laughs> Lastly, thank you to my friends, my peers, and all the students here at OCU. Without your votes of faith in me, I would not be standing here today. Frankly, it's hard to write a graduation speech. I have no deep wisdom to impart. I have no professional experience to aid you in future careers, and I'm in no way qualified to give you advice. Only a few weeks ago, I first learned how to mail an envelope. <laughs> However, I have had the pleasure of serving as the president of Student Government Association, and would like to share with you a little bit about my experience in office. When I was running for election, I pledged to change the grading policy at OCU. And you would be surprised how difficult it is to completely change the way in which an academic institute operates. <laughs> I put countless hours into writing surveys, collecting data, and doing research until eventually, I believed I had a report that presented the information in a way that would convey the faculty and staff at OCU to see the benefits of making a change. I compiled a report and went through the proper channels to accomplish what I had set out to do and what the student body mandated I do. I presented that report to the provost, to the faculty senate, and eventually to the board of trustees. And with each subsequent presentation, I began to realize the impossibility of what I was doing. Despite the research, despite the data, and despite the student interest, the idea of changing the grading policy simply wasn't gaining traction. In the final few weeks of my presidency, I found myself consumed with the idea that I had failed to do what I had promised. I had failed to effect the change I so desperately sought. It was only until I was sitting in my securities analysis class, listening to Dr. James Ma talk about success when I started feeling differently. He said, I know all students care about their grades, and they should. But if you get good grades in this class and learn nothing, you have failed as students, and I have failed as a professor. I'll read that one more time. If you got good grades in this class and learned nothing, you failed as students, and I have failed as a professor. I did not change the grading policy. I did not follow through with my promise, and I did not achieve the same success as some of my predecessors. But I did learn something. I learned that failure at its very core is not what we are defined by. All of us will fail at some point. We are defined rather by how we are affected by that failure, how we take that failure and learn from it in a way that makes us better professionals, better leaders, and better members of the greater society. However, all that being said, today is a day marked not by our failures, but by our successes. 
And I am proud to stand before you and address you not as fellow students, but as fellow members of the graduating class of 2017. In the immortal and steadfast words of the profound rapper Drake, <laughs> we made it. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the Secretary of the Oklahoma City University Board of Trustees, Jane Giroux Gamble. Thank you. Thank you. President Henry, fellow trustees, distinguished faculty and guests, OCU amazing staff, students and families. On behalf of Chairman Ron Norick and our Board of Trustees, I want to welcome you to this very meaningful day. It's a day you're likely to remember because it's such a marker event. It's one of those days that signals a huge transition from one part of life to another. It's a day you say goodbye and hello at the same time. Goodbye to what has been four years of dramatic change and hello to an exciting future. It's a day that we remember to be grateful for what has been given. As a trustee, I want you to know, students, we are grateful that you chose Oklahoma City University. And families, we are grateful that you chose to pay for it. <laughs> and we're grateful that you're here today. I remember my graduation, my dear friends who sat next to me, they're still my close friends today. I remember how important the faculty had been to my four years of university life. I had no idea at that time the impact my education and the caring culture of OCU would have on my future. So enjoy this day, students and families. You've earned all of it. Celebrate each other and take a part of OCU with you. Make us proud and come home often. You know, I also have to add, as a trustee, it's been a joy to see the leadership of our president continue to evolve and make great things happen here. What a blessing Robert Henry is to OCU and to the Oklahoma City community. I understand he just won the title of a best administrator this year from our students. Well, as a trustee, we could name him best administrator as well and best friend of OCU. We are extremely grateful to President Henry for his intellect, his integrity, and his deep love for this place. Please welcome the President of Oklahoma City University, Robert Henry. Thank you so much, Dr. Gamble. Uh, Jane Jero Gamble has won every award that OCU has. Uh, she is a remarkable person, a remarkable trustee, and she even handles the difficult job of being married to trustee Jerry Gamble with dignity and grace. The president and the secretary of the corporation do have uh, something in common. When we borrow money, it's Jane and I that have to sign hundreds of documents for that. <laughs> so. Good morning again and welcome, a very spe special welcome today to all of you, to the, to the generous philanthropists who donate time and, and resources to our university, our trustees. We welcome you who are here. Will, our trustee, will the trustees of OCU who are here please stand? <laughs> There's a lot of time and money in that row that just stood up. Um, I am delighted to welcome you to our 2017 commencement. And we think we have something special for you. We have many things special for you. We also think for the first time in the history of OCU, we think, we think we have silenced the 12 o'clock whistle. So we'll just have to see. We think that the city manager whom we gave an honorary doctorate to last year 
<laughs> he told me, I'd convinced me, he said, you know, I could get that whistle stopped. So we shall see. <laughs> this is an, a momentous event at OCU. We had a marvelous baccalaureate service with our glorious uh, university organist, Melissa Plowman, and Randy Von Ellison in our choir, and our wonderful guest minister who delivered a challenging message, some challenging scriptures that were read. It's just been a great, it's been a great day so far, and I think it will continue to be a great day. And one of the reasons it will be a great day is because our police force and our facilities and our staff rebuilt this place from the windstorm that we had just a few days ago. You cannot imagine the hours that they spent, and I am so grateful to them. And so, you know, hug a policeman and a facilities guy today. So much has happened this year. I cannot possibly convey everything that needs to be conveyed, but I just have to hit a few highlights. I encourage you to look at our website and see others. In the Minder School of Business, we completed our first cohort of students in the new Native American Enterprise Management Certificate Program. Cohort two started in January 2017. The Stephen C. A.G. Economic Research and Policy Institute has become Oklahoma's Regional Applied Economic Research Center. It is used every day. I can say I actually have used it myself. It's conducted a number of significant research projects, including the release of the 2017-18 economic and fiscal forecast for the city of Oklahoma City, a very important document. This done for Oklahoma City and for the Greater Oklahoma City Chamber of Commerce. At our internationally acclaimed Ann Lacey School of American Dance and Entertainment, many graduates have returned to campus to engage with current students on a variety of levels. Gabby Ruiz, co-star of CW Network's Emmy Award-winning com comedy Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, taught a dance masterclass in April. Sasha Hutchings, best known for her roles as Peggy Shiler and Maria Reynolds in the Broadway smash hit Hamilton, you may have heard of it, also met with faculty and students last month. By the way, I'm so glad that Hamilton came out as a play because they were going to take Alexander Hamilton's face off the $10 bill and keep uh, uh, keep Andrew Jackson on the 20. It made no sense. Hamilton is safe now. <laughs> In our School of Theater, Bradley Taylor, a graduating BFA theater design. <laughs> They're good at cheering. Anyway, Bradley won the Barbizon Award for Excellence in Lighting and Design at the National Kennedy Center American College Theater Festival in Washington, D.C. last month. It's great when you win national competitions, and we do a lot. Our recent design and production graduates continue to find astonishing success, such as landing jobs at Chicago's famous Shakespeare Theater, Bay Street Theater, and Playwrights Horizon Theater. At our Bass School of Music, Graduating students have been offered entry to graduating programs ranging from Ithaca College's Master Program in Composition to the Doctoral Program in Medicine at Albert Einstein Medical School in New York. I received so many compliments about the production a few weeks ago of Anything Goes that my e email mailbox jammed. What a fabulous production that was. And at Kramer School of Nursing, the school of nursing that rocks, 12 community health nursing centers traveled to Belize with a faculty member to obtain clinical experience and to help serve the local population. The school's new Duncan location has become a beacon for rural medical training in Oklahoma. In its inaugural year, 13 students are enrolled in traditional undergraduate program and a cohort of 15 students are anticipated for fall of 2017. In our Petrie College of Arts and Sciences, Dr. Jeanette Mish, director of the MFA in Creative Writing, was appointed the Oklahoma State Poet Laureate for next year. Two OCU Communications video projects won first place from the National Broadcasting Society. Our law school continues to attract the best students for its world-class program of legal education. In fact, a handful of you will be matriculating into our law school this fall. 43 graduates of the law school were sworn into the Oklahoma Bar Association on April 18, and on May 14, 121 law students will graduate. The law school's Dean Valerie Couch has finished her five-year term and has been designated Dean, Emeritus, Dean Emerita, and fortunately for us, 
After the sabbatical we promised her, she will be returning to teach at OCU Law. While we will miss her as dean, we look forward to her now having the time to teach one of her first loves. And we welcome our own Professor Lee Peoples as the acting dean for the coming year. In athletics, we've had a stellar athletics program. We are the finest school in the AIA. We have uh, softball and baseball games going on today. <laughs> softball coach Phil McSpadden won his 1,600th softball game in April 26th. More wins than any other four-year coach in the history of the game. Our teams won the 2016 NAIA National Championships in softball and men's golf. And OCU took the 2017 NAIA Women's Basketball National Championship. As well as the 2017 NAIA Competitive Cheerleading Championship, National Championship, which was held on our campus. That puts us at 64 national championships. We currently have four teams ranked in the top three in the NAIA. Softball is number one, baseball is number two, men's golf is number one, and women's golf is number three. I'm so proud of our student athletes. Moving on to our Delaney Brown Library, this year's Library Support Award, based on nominations from the library staff, which regularly went to, went to the OCU Societies, the organization like none other, which regularly donates to, the, to our library and other important campus programs. And thanks to the gen generosity of Sharon Barnum and Jeannie Hoffman-Smith, all of the posters from 19 years of our Poetry Month events, sponsored by the Center for Interpersonal Studies through Film and Literature, have been framed and are on the east wall of the fourth floor in the library. The fourth and fifth floor of the library are great places to, to, take, a, to take a tour. And finally, the OCU Physician Assistant Program has its second cohort beginning this year. Under the direction of Dr. Dan McNeil, a pool of more than 300 applicants applied and was pared down to about 10%, 36 outstanding students. The first cohort are, is doing clinical training now. This has been a remarkable year. And graduates, you are exceptional graduates. You carry with you the prestige of an Oklahoma City University education. The university family joins the graduates and all the loved ones in sharing the joy of your accomplishments. Now, again, time does not allow mentioning all of the awards, championships, and honors, but please take a look at our webpage. And for now, I would like to, I do, would like to introduce a few very special awards, our Leadsizer Awards. I see the faces of students, faculty, and trustees, and friends who have distinguished themselves in many ways this past year as I look over the audience. But I want to recognize several outstanding members of the OCU community. I would like to call on my colleague, the newly minted provost, Kent Buchanan, to help me. By the way, I, I meant to say earlier, uh, my wife, Dr. Jan Henry, and Kent's wife, Laurie Buchanan, are seated together down here on, on the front, and they're making notes about our performance today. So, but please welcome them if you would. <clears throat> so the program lists the impressive awards of our graduating senior, seniors. Today we would like to recognize students who've achieved great academic success. These students are our Letzizer Medal winners for 2017. These are given to the top graduating senior students. As I call their name, I would ask that this year's winners come on stage to receive their medals and certificates. The bronze medal is awarded to Jordan Kent Brannon. The silver medal is awarded to Arish Allier. And the gold medal, the gold medal is awarded to Sylvia C. Hayes. Jordan, I just want to say congratulations.
you're witnessing many hours of study pass by. On a day set to honor our graduating students, it's very appropriate to pause for a moment to, to recognize our outstanding faculty. The faculty really are the heart and soul of the institution. They stay for years and years and make the place and create the culture, the, the culture of learning and the culture of family that it provides. Each year, OCU honors a full-time faculty member whose teaching scholarship and service to the university and professional community are deemed exemplary. Nominations for this honor are solicited from other faculty members and the, the administrators and staff as well as students. But the final selection rests with a very difficult group to please, the previous recipients of the award. Pretty demanding jury there. It is my pleasure to recognize the 2017 Outstanding Faculty Award recipient, Dr. Melissa Hackman, Associate Professor and Chairperson of the Department of Psychology and Director of the Child Advocacy Studies Training Program. Some of us will hear more from her later this afternoon. Oklahoma City University's mission is, prepare is to prepare students to become effective leaders in service to their communities. We grant the university's highest accolades for servant leadership through the conferral of honorary degrees and through the bestowal of the Servant Leader Award. This year, the Servant Leader Award goes to our trustee and good friend, Jeannie Hoffman-Smith. Unavailable to be here today, I want to just say a few things about her, and I want to urge you to read about her in the program. Knowing that she could not be here today, we presented the award to her at our last trustees meeting, where she received, of course, a standing ovation. Her bio is on page 37. When time allows, do read about her. She is as selfless a person as I know and it is difficult to compre comprehend how much she has done for this university, for Oklahoma City, and for our state. Her many patients revere her. She's on the advisory board of one of our greatest nonprofits, the beloved Inasmuch Foundation. But perhaps her greatest contribution, it's hard to say there have been so many contributions, has been in her efforts to bring great films, especially great documentaries, and also to bring great poetry to the Great Plains. Graduates, if you are in search of a role model, I highly recommend Jeannie Hoffman Smith. Now today, I'm privileged to present the university's highest honor, an honorary degree in musical arts. A couple, uh, uh, many months ago, I was having lunch in the cafeteria in the summer, and our wonderful professor of guitar, Matt Denman, came over to me, and he said, are you aware of the Romero brothers? And I said, of course, the greatest classical guitarist in the world. And he said, well, they're sitting at the table right behind you. And they were. I didn't know it at the time. And I got to go hear them play at this wonderful symposium that they teach for us. And they are a remarkable, a remarkable group, a remarkable family. Our recipient today of our doctorate is Celine Romero. He is a renowned classical guitarist who travels the world, but also, as I said, presents the Romero Institute at Oklahoma City Univer University this summer. I have given him permission to doze off during graduation because he just got off a plane from North Korea, uh, from South Korea. But, much better place to go. <laughs> Much better place to go. I don't know how that happened. I was just reading the script that the Russians gave me. <laughs> but 
the university is so proud, and I am so very proud to present this honor and to have him and his family here today. His biography, along with the other recipients, is on page 31 of your program. Uh, one of our other recipients, we will uh, schedule the, the formal presentation at a later time. But this is a very high honor of the university, and it is telling the world we think it should be done like they're doing it. The people who receive the honorary doctors, we think the world should be run like they're trying to run it. I would now like to ask uh, Celine's brother, Pepe, to come to the podium and to say a few words about his brother. Thank you so much, President Henry. I do remember that lunch and how wonderful it was to meet the President. And uh, <clears throat> I am very, very touched. I'm very happy that my brother is receiving this high, high honor for his high, high contribution to the world of music, and particular to the world of the guitar. It was Celine who created the Guitar Quartet as an art form. Let's go to 1958, 1959, to Fort Ord, and two soldiers, two young soldiers, one Celine, the other James Lucas, the son of an immigrant who had made a lot of money. And James Lucas and Celine met each other and realized that they both loved and they lived for classical music. It was the dream of James Lucas to become a manager. And his father, having the possibilities to make that dream come true, sent James Lucas to New York to start a managing firm. James Lucas asked Celine if he would let him represent him as a as his manager, and I am sure that Celine would have dazzled the audiences with his virtuosity and his incredible uh, solo guitar playing. But Celine, above all, is a great humanitarian. And he did not want to see himself rise to stardom and wonder what would happen to the other members of his family. He brought James Lucas to the house. He met with all of us. We all played for James Lucas and the guitar quartet was formed. The guitar quartet has given way to tremendous, to beautiful compositions being written for it by composers such as Joaquin Rodrigo, Federico Moreno Torroba, the great American composer Morton Gould, and many, many, many more, and guitar quartets have sprung into the world of music in all over the world. Compositions have been written for it, and not only guitar quartet. Here in this magnificent university, <clears throat> and through the fantastic work of Matt Denman, we have heard big guitar ensembles. All of these is the creation of that 
decision Selim made that humanitarian and love and family should persevere and overcome the ego and the wonderful feeling of power that being a solo star can bring. And since that time, he has been a very strong fighter for guitar quartet, for the Romeros, and that has been his life. And I feel delighted that he's getting this honor. Thank you. Isn't it great when brothers get along? Thank you, Maestro. Now, Celine, will you please join me here at the, at the podium as I read the proclamation by the Board of Trustees. Whereas Oklahoma City University is an acclaimed university affiliated with the United Methodist Church and committed to the ideal of servant leadership, whereas Celine Romero has touched and influenced the world of guitar with his musical gifts, and whereas Celine Romero created a new art form, the classical guitar quartet, inspiring composers such as Joaquin Rodrigo, Federico Moreno Torraba, Morton Gould, and others. Whereas Celine Romero performed worldwide as a member of the Romeros, the royal family of guitar, leaving a lasting legacy in the hearts and minds of music students here at OCU and around the world. Whereas Celine Romero was knighted by Juan Carlos I, King of Spain, with the Gran Ruse de la Orden de la Isabel de la, Cat de la Catolica. Sorry about my Spanish. Beautiful. The highest, the highest civilian honor given in Spain, the Spanish version of the Presidential Medal of the Arts. Therefore, by the power invested in me as president of Oklahoma City University, by the Board of Trustees, and by a unanimous vote of those trustees, I confer upon you, Celine Romero, the Honorary Doctor of Musical Arts with all the honors and privileges that pertain thereto. Thank you very much. Thank you. As you can see, I'm really a very lucky person. I am very thankful to Dr. Henry, to the Board of Trustees, to the Deans of Music, and to my friend, dear friend Matt Demon, that has established one of the best guitar programs in the country, and which every year my family and I, we are looking forward to come here and to spend this then two weeks is one of the best time of the year for us. Thank you very much. It's just a lot of fun to have the best in the world with you. And speaking of the best in the world, I have the pleasure of introducing our commencement speaker, Michelle Milben. Michelle is the product of a conspiracy, Jane Giroux Gamble and I. And Jane and I, our conspiracies usually work. We think it will today. Surprisingly, for all the public persona that Michelle has, she's really a private person. But she has promised me, I told her, you gotta talk about you today. You gotta let us in a little bit and explain the wonderful person, the wonderful life and the wonderful career that you have created for yourself. While she was a student at OCU, Milben assumed the role of youth pastor for a church in Oklahoma City, where for almost six years she served as an advocate for arts education, students in underserved communities, and for incarcerated students. During that time, she founded an after-school program for teens and provided academic tutoring, sports, and performing arts program. She became the first woman from OCU to win the Miss Black Oklahoma pageant in 2005, and she used that platform to continue her advocacy. 
She was recognized by the Oklahoma State Legislature in 2006 for her dedication to bettering the youth of Oklahoma. Michelle did her undergraduate work in music here at Oklahoma City University at the Wanda Bass School. She entered law school at the University of Oklahoma in 2006. She studied at Georgetown University Law Center as a visiting student and was awarded her Juris Doctorate from OU in 2009. Later that year, she moved to Washington, D.C., where she served as a staffer in the U.S. Congress in the House Judiciary Committee. She ultimately was recruited by the executive branch as government, of the government, where she served as an official in the Department of Justice and later as an advisor to President Barack Obama on matters related to the U.S. Congress. It was in that position that I got to have breakfast in the White House. M Michelle gives a wonderful tour. She's continued her service to youth and families since moving to Washington. She served as a commissioner in the Commonwealth of Virginia for the City of Alexandria's Redevelopment and Housing Authority. She served on the board of directors for the Boys and Girls Clubs of Washington, D.C. She has remained a committed member of the clergy by serving as an associate minister at the historic Alfred Street Baptist Church in Virginia. She's a 2016 graduate of President Obama's Leadership Workshop. She is a 2014 graduate of the Political Leaders Program at the Bipartisan Sorensen Institute for Political Leadership at the University of Virginia, a very famous program. She was awarded the Don Lawson Leadership Development Award from the Virginia Leadership Institute and also the Oliver Hill Award for Social Activism by the National Black Law Students Association for her efforts in battling against social injustices. Michelle is a shining example of where an OCU education can take you. Her wonderful education in the arts and in the arts and sciences provided here, and moving from that into law school and into a profession of great activism, all the same time keeping her commitment to her faith and keeping commitment to teaching and preaching her faith. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a signal honor to welcome, and will you join me in welcoming, our own Michelle Milben. Good morning. Or is it still morning? Okay, good afternoon. <clears throat> President Henry, Provost Buchanan, Trustee J. Rowe, Celine and Dave, great to meet you both. Trustees, faculty, and the good-looking graduates of Oklahoma City University. I know you guys are excited. I'm excited too. It's a privilege to be before you this morning. To the class of 2017, I congratulate you. Welcome to the finish line. Now to the family and friends and the community of the graduates, I want you to do me a favor. Take out your wallet. Hold it really tight, stare really deeply into it, and just say, welcome back. <laughs> your sacrifices and your support have enabled this prestigious group of our nation's next leaders to accomplish great things and create great memories that will last for a lifetime. My name is Michelle Milvin, and I am proud to be one of you, a graduate of Oklahoma City University. This is my home where I grew up and where I'm proud to call home. But I love coming back to Oklahoma. It's always good to come back to a place you know really well. One of the first things I always try to do is to get over to 36 and Kelly, give me some of that good Leo's barbecue, the best barbecue in the country. Or jumping over to Midtown and grabbing something at Vazler's or at Blue Garden. I mean, you guys don't understand. These things weren't around when I was in college. So Oklahoma City just keeps getting better and better and better. I love watching the Oklahoma City Thunder play, which I'm so sad about this year. But uh, may I just take a point of privilege and suggest to the NBA that there is no other option for MVP but Russell Westbrook. That's right. Don't get it wrong if, if they're watching. <laughs> but the thing I love to do the most is to come back home and visit this wonderful campus and see the amazing things that have happened since I graduated 12 years ago. Now, I have to admit, being here today, it has made me a bit nervous. I was humbled and honored by the invitation to address you today. But however, I am still asking myself while standing on this stage, why am I your commencement speaker? I remember the prestigious speakers that have donned the halls of the OCU Speaker Series and Commencement Hall of Fame. You've had U.S. Supreme Court Justice Sandra Day O'Connor, social rights advocate and Nobel laureate Archbishop Desmond Tutu, Pulitzer and Tony Award winner and uh, playwright Edward Albee, even the chimpanzee, chimpan, uh, excuse me, chimpanzee whisperer, ethologist Jane Goodall, and celebrated journalist Helen Thomas. So I look at all these notable speakers, and it had me a little bit intimidated. 
for I had nothing to do with the ending of apartheid. Uh, I've never sat on the Supreme Court. I don't have a Tony and a Pulitzer, and I have never formally met a chimpanzee. However, I am taking comfort in the fact that my, I cannot recall who my commencement speaker was 12 years ago, so maybe if I speak under 20 minutes, you'll forget everything I'm saying as well. <laughs> my college experience at OCU was so fulfilling and so fun. When I graduated, I was very driven. I wanted to be successful, and we all want to be successful and feel like we've accomplished something, right? Well, my goals had everything to do with me and had nothing to do with service. When I was a student at OCU, the university's theme for our existence as students was to develop into servant leaders. All around us, the message was clear. Before you lead and before you succeed, serve. But I just wanted to be famous. So let me start out by telling you this one truth. You have a purpose. There is something you were created to be and something you are gifted to do, and there's a destiny waiting for you. And my destiny to serve certainly did find me when I was a student here at OCU. Now, I'm going to be very transparent today with you, and this is not comfortable for me. Uh, however, I pray that, you know, whatever I'm going to share today inspires some of you. I hope to make you laugh. I hope to make you cry. I hope to make you laugh so hard, maybe pee your pants. Not all of you, just maybe a couple of you guys. But uh, in college, I set my sights on fame and fortune. But it was until my sophomore year at OCU when I came across a scripture in the Bible that paused my desire to be famous. It's in Matthew chapter 20. Go look it up. It's a good scripture. Matthew 20, verse 26 and 28 reads, Whoever among you wants to be great must become your servant. And this is what the Son of Man has come to do. He came to serve and not to be served. Now, when I read this my sophomore year, this scripture sounded off like an uh, alarm in my heart because it struck my mind and struck my ambitions with a soft but very evident blow. Because I knew at that time I was searching for my purpose and I thought I found it. I'm going to be famous. But after reading that scripture, I felt like my life was a GPS and my GPS decided to abruptly yell in the middle of my journey down the highway towards fame, turn left, make a left turn. We're going a different direction now. Or maybe to put it in terms of Tinder and Bumble, swipe left, swipe right. Uh, if you are over the age of maybe 40, we'll talk to you about Tinder and Bumble after this. I couldn't ignore, though, that my life and my ambitions were making a turn. So instead of moving to New York or Nashville or LA like I really wanted to and like I'd planned, I graduated from OCU and left almost six years of ministry and went to law school to pursue a life in service. But I came here today to tell you that Striving to be a great leader and having influence and having fame and fortune and success, it's not a bad thing at all. It's actually very wise to be ambitious and to be organized and motivated and have a goal as you journey through life. Or as my old OCU finance professor used to say, if you aim for nothing, you'll hit nothing every time. So you see, being a student on this campus helped me see that my goals and my purpose in life was not meant to be self-serving, but rather we are outfitted with gifts and with talents and abilities to serve. So today I'm hopefully here to be maybe your GPS or your Tinder, or your Bumble. I want to share with you three things I learned from being an OCU student that made my ordinary life that was all about me an extraordinary life all about service. So the first thing I want to share with you that I learned from OCU that moved my life from being an ordinary all about me to being extraordinary all about service was that OCU taught me to walk in my truth. Be good at what you're good at. Be the best version and the highest expression of who God has called you to be. Or as the comedian Kevin Hart would say, do you, boo. Or as my grandmother would say, you might as well be what you is, because you can't be what you ain't too long. You were never created to be a rough draft. You are the finished and final product of a God who loves you, and a God that has fashioned you with qualities and a uniqueness that cannot be carbon copied or reproduced. Let me take some of you guys to bio back to biology class, just for one quick second, and for one last time. And I promise you, none of this information is going to be on the test. Your deoxyribonucleic acid, or DNA for short, is the genetic formula that has all of the instructions your cells needed before you were born to develop and make you the one copy that will ever exist. Now there are these things, this is by the way going to get really boring, but hang on tight, I'm almost done. There are these things called nucleotides or building blocks that make up your DNA, and your DNA is encoded specifically with instructions to make you, you. Science shows that it's impossible for two different individuals, even identical twins, to ever have the same set of mutations and be exactly the same person. And I read an article from a genetics professor and researcher that put it this way. You have a better shot of randomly choosing the same atom in the known universe twice than you have having two different people getting the same set of mutations. So what does all of this mean? 
Because there's only one you and only one version of you, that means there's something that only you are created to do that can better this world by doing it only the way you do best. Your race, your nationality, your gender, your identity, your orientation, whether you come from a long line of wealth or whether you were raised in poverty, who you were created to be and the life you were given was intentional. And the qualities that make up who you are can shape your purpose, but it won't determine whether you reach the goals you set in life. Only living authentically and being the best version of who you are can make you the blessing this world needs, because this world does need your talents, your skills, and your service. But now that you're entering this world as an OCU graduate, we need you to believe in who you are and agree with who you were created to be. You know, I remember the first time I was confronted by someone who attempted to set me on a path that was different than who I was created to be, and it was actually during my college years. I set up a meeting with a lawyer here in town, and this meeting was to discuss my interest in wanting to go to law school. I believed a legal education would help me get into my career in service. Now this lawyer, bless her heart. Um, you know, do you all still say that in Oklahoma, bless your heart? That's just something, my mom says that she's notorious for saying that, so that's where I get it from. She's the kind of person who will look at a woman and say, she knows she should have worn a girdle, bless her heart. <laughs> or she'll say things like, you know, oh, he's as smart as a bag of rocks, bless his heart. So. Uh, let me say this of this lawyer, bless her heart. But I go to this lawyer with my heart on my sleeve and this goal in my heart to serve, but instead of showing me the ropes and giving me sound advice and clear steps on how to apply for law school, this lawyer looked at the color of my skin, made assumptions of who I was, and she used statistics about African Americans to convince me that I would not do well on the LSAT and that I would not get into law school. Bless her heart. Now, for the record, I graduated from OCU with honors, cum laude to be exact, and I made dean's list and I made the president's honor roll. Yet this lawyer, bless her heart, still tore apart my aspirations simply because she believed the color of my skin would have a significant impact on my ability to succeed. That meeting defeated me. It broke my heart, and her words had me thinking, well, maybe I'm not supposed to serve, and maybe I'm not supposed to go this route. But I've come to tell you today that there will be people, there will be critics, there will be naysayers, there will be colleagues, there may even be some version of our politics that will try to diminish the very purpose in your life. But don't rob the world of what you have to offer by succumbing to some rough draft version of who others want you to be. Stop talking about your problems and quit pointing out the differences that others point out about you. And start becoming part of your own solution. Start bettering the world by being the best version of who you were created to be. Be good at what you're good at. You. And here's the most important part of this point. By being good at what you're good at, you will help create the kind of world we all want to live in. You can't just look to your congressman and your pastor, your priest, your rabbi, your imam, your community leader, your governor, or your bartender to impact the world. No. It is up to you to create the kind of world you want to see. We need you scientists. We, we need you artists and musicians. We need you leaders in politics and business and economics. We need you poets. We, we need you legal minds and medical professionals and you leaders in criminal justice and religion. We need all of your talents authentically serving this world. Because we may see poverty and injustice become pervasive. And we know that's not the world we want to live in. That's why we need you to make the difference. We may see science treated as a matter of opinion rather than a tool which to build sound policies. And we know that's not the world we want to live in. That's why we need you to make the difference. We don't want to see any more young people suffer unnecessary and needless violence in their schools or in their neighborhoods or when they're just trying to leave a party. We're looking to you to make the difference. I want to take you back to that meeting with that lawyer. Remember back in my college days? Remember her? Bless her heart. Well, you see, because I knew my truth, thank God for most of you, I knew my truth in college, I did not end up listening to her advice. No, instead, I not only went on to obtain a law degree, I was blessed to go on and serve in the United States Congress, in the Department of Justice, and in the White House. And I say all this to say, <laughs> I say all this to say, before you lead and before you succeed, find your truth, be good at what you're good at, and live out the most authentic version of who you were created to be. The second thing I learned here at OCU that moved my ordinary life that was all about me to an extraordinary life about service is that I learned about the power of faith. See, once you exit the doors of this gymnasium today, you're going to be tested, and you may have some setbacks. You may make mistakes. You may even fail at what you're seeking to accomplish. We all do. Your student body president just told us that earlier. But one thing I've noticed about life is that no one ever puts their mistakes or their failures in their bio. You ever notice that? For example, in high school, I thought it would be a good idea to dress gothic, all black. And this was even though I lived in a home with a mother who had outlawed my new look and had already told me that the only black I was allowed to wear out of her house was the black on my skin. But that's not going in my bio, right? 
Or an even bigger mistake I made. In 2014, I cut my hair and got bangs. Yes, friends, bangs. Great idea for First Lady, former First Lady Michelle Obama, bad idea for Michelle Melvin. And I looked hideous, but that's not going in the bio. I mean, you may fail at something too. I mean, Pepsi and United Airlines, they've had a pretty rough start to this year, wouldn't you say? <laughs> but I'm still certain that you're gonna get a two liter bottle of Pepsi with your next order from Little Caesars or Papa John's. And I'm certain that some of you today flew here on United Airlines, so clearly failure wasn't final for them, right? But I've made mistakes, bigger mistakes than what I've shared with you before, and I've had serious failures on my record in life, and you will too. But now that you're graduating, it is imperative to keep a healthy perspective about your mistakes and your failures. I like the way New York Times bestselling author Mark Batterson says it. Manage your mistakes just as well as you manage your success. You see, you may have to manage your success and you may also have to face setbacks that are outside of your control. Thus, in this life, in the complex and troubling times, what do you hold on to in order to not lose your perspective or lose your focus? In the Bible, Hebrews chapter 11 says, the faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things we cannot see. You see, faith and hope are crucial and key components to your success and for your service because they activate action and they fix your eyes on a goal when doubt and fear and failure come into play. And the reason why they're so necessary in your life after OCU is because faith will be your best asset in helping you maintain your focus and where you're going in life. Faith and the faith to stay focused. Faith like the faith of Clara Looper. Clara Looper's not just a name and a scholarship here at OCU. On August 19, 1958, Clara Looper, an Oklahoma educator and the mother of the Oklahoma Civil Rights Movement, led 13 children down to Katz Drugstore downtown in Oklahoma City to sit at a lunch counter, and she led these 13 children every day to sit at the lunch counter and challenge their policy that allowed waitresses to refuse to serve African Americans. See, Clara taught the children to have faith that their actions would make a difference, but to stay polite and focused if anyone confronted them. Their sit-in at Katz Drugstore went on for a while, but eventually the management at Katz Drugstore changed their policy and served the children. Now that's faith. But could you keep that kind of faith and stay focused in that circumstance? I was told that story when I was a child, and I had the privilege of knowing Miss Looper when I was growing up, and she taught me that why that important gift of faith was so important to keep my eyes on my goal and let it be immovable. I can tell you that her great example of faith held me in law school when I got to a place where I was ready to quit my journey and stop pursuing service. See, I'd left the University of Oklahoma College of Law where I had scholarships and a very affordable tuition to go to D.C. and attend Georgetown Law School where I had no scholarships and a very high tuition. I was losing the faith to get to the finish line, and I had two jobs. All I could afford for groceries was $20 a week, and I could barely afford to eat at times. And may I just say, if you're trying to find a way and looking for a way to get thin, I can tell you exactly what to eat. Nothing. I was almost at the finish line, but the circumstances and the financial struggle made me think about the words of that lawyer back in my college days. Remember her? Bless her heart. Doubt and fear began to creep in, and, and the decisions I'd made, I was thinking, am I going to have to quit? Am I going to have to get out of here? Do I have what it takes? For you see, doubt and fear are inevitable in life, and they happen, but doubt and fear exist only to contradict and counteract your faith and determination. But know this, doubt and determination and fear and faith require the same thing to grow, your focus. So I kept my faith in the goal, I stayed focused, and thankfully I graduated and I was able to jump into a life of service. But that experience led me to believe something so important, that the most successful person in the world is not the person who grew up with wealth and access and the right color skin or the right degree or the right school. No, I believe success finds the person that has mastered the ability to stay focused. For faith can even ignite focus and discourage the temptation to quit, even if your dream is taking a little bit longer than you want it to. That kind of faith, like one of the greatest living civil rights legends of our time, John Lewis. You know, two years ago, I had the privilege to travel down to Selma, Alabama, when the president, President Obama, um, commemorated the 50th anniversary of Bloody Sunday. Bloody Sunday was a peaceful protest um, for voting rights in 1965 that turned violent when Alabama state troopers violently beat and almost killed uh, some of the white and black peaceful protesters that day. And watching former President Obama speak on that day in 2015 was historic and incredibly meaningful for me as an American. But there was one moment I'll never forget, and that is when Congressman uh, John Lewis introduced the former president by saying, if someone had told me 50 years ago when he was 25 
that I'd be back on this bridge introducing a black president of the United States, I'd have said, you're crazy. Back in 1965, that young John Lewis was beaten by those Alabama troopers, and it wasn't the first time he risked his life for what he believed in, but nevertheless, he persisted. And he has continued the fight to stand up and speak out when something isn't right in this country. Even last year, you know, John Lewis found himself back in good trouble by holding a sit-in for almost 24 hours on the floor of the United States House of Representatives to continue his focus to fight the good fight of faith. And he's 77 years old. What's my point? Faith will keep you focused on the goal. And you may not be able to see it or touch it, but you can still be 77 years old and say the course because of faith. And now more than ever, I want to encourage you today that before you lead, before you succeed, before you find success, keep your eyes fixed on the goal of what you were created to be and stay focused. The last thing I'll share with you that OCU provided to me that I know they provided to you because now you're about to be a graduate is the, uh, the opportunity to never give up on our standard. This is our standard. Be smart, be kind, work hard, and serve. You have a choice today. Will your degree and your education be self-serving, or can you use it to serve? See, OCU taught this to me, and I love our standard, be smart, be kind, work hard, and serve. That's what I got out of my college education, and that's it. And mastering of the knowledge of these qualities is very important before you lead and before you succeed. And why? Well, for starters, wherever you go, you are now going to be associated with OCU, and those qualities are our standard. Be, be smart, be kind, work hard, and serve. So make us proud. But you're also going into a real world where not everybody's going to live up to that standard, and not everyone's going to seek to achieve their goals in that way. See, some people reach success by being the office bully or a mean guy or a mean girl in the job. Some other people may try to attempt to take away credit from your hard work in order for them to be successful. Or you, some people may be openly critical about the way you conduct yourself at a high level as a professional. Some people are self-seeking in their success, and that's okay. But you don't need to ascribe to that because you have this knowledge and you know our standard. Be smart, be kind, work hard, and serve. And that is not an easy standard to live up at all times, friends, I know. But you're embarking on your career, so your life schedule is gonna change now. Some of you may get married and start families, start businesses, get more degrees, travel. A lot of new adventures await you as a graduate. But the key to keep the standard at the forefront of your life is gonna help you navigate life. I wanna encourage you to make time to serve. Work hard to be an example to others. And don't cave in when the standards of the world seem to be more attractive or when the tactics of others attempt you to abandon our OCU standard. Listen, I've been in places and times where in my professional career I can recall walking into rooms and knowing somebody in the office was just talking about me before I walked in that room. I've received a lot of awards and, and recognitions in life. I have. I've also even had people, I've worked on something, busted my behind for weeks and weeks on a great project only to walk into a meeting and have someone get there before me and try to take credit for my efforts. It's happened before. Now, I'm not saying let people walk all over you because I know Jesus says we need to be the peacemakers, but Jesus ain't no fool. <laughs> but you are now becoming an OCU graduate and you now have the power to take your education and let your, self, your uh, education be a service to others and not just self-serving. And you have that standard that can shape the rest of your life. Be smart, be kind, work hard, and serve. I want to close today by letting you know that service has greater benefits than just feeling good about doing good. You can change the world. You can serve in so many ways in your community, in your faith community, your family, your friends, even your country. That scripture in Matthew chapter 20 will remain at the forefront of my life, and I hope it has encouraged you to do the same, that if you want to be great, before you lead and before you succeed, serve. Our world is in great need of leaders that can be that example. I mean, have you turned on the news lately? You don't have to look far to see how, as John Maxwell says, one's beliefs, thoughts, and values can influence their behavior. But no matter what you see happening in the world or no matter what happens to come across your Twitter feed in the morning, don't let it distract you from your mission of serving. Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King said that life's most persistent and urgent question is what are you doing for others? And Dr. King's good friend, the Reverend Billy Graham, underscored that statement and once said, God has given us two hands, one to receive with and one to give with. So to the class of 2017, now that you're about to become OCU graduates, what will you do for others? I pray that you live to be the best version of who you created to be. I pray that you keep your faith and your goals close to you so that you don't lose your focus. And more importantly, I pray that you find ways to serve. Congratulations, graduates, you are at the finish line. Now run through the tape, may the Lord bless you, and may God bless America.
Thank you so much, Michelle. What an inspiration. We are now ready to confer the degrees. Will the candidates for all baccalaureate degrees please stand? That's you. Come on. President Henry, President Henry, on behalf of the faculty of Oklahoma City University, it is my privilege to present the 2017 candidates for the baccalaureate degrees. Thank you, Provost Buchanan. By the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Oklahoma City University, and upon the recommendation of the university faculty, I confer upon you the baccalaureate degree with all the honors and privileges that pertain thereto. Thank you, President Henry. New degree holders, you may now move your tassel from right to left to signify your graduation. <laughs> They've already done it, but please join me in congratulating the newest Oklahoma City University alumni. Graduates, you may be seated. You will be directed to the stage by the faculty marshals. The names of our graduating students will be announced by Dr. Robert Griffin. <clears throat> As you cross the stage today, after receiving your diploma and shaking hands with President Henry, we invite you to seal your covenant with Oklahoma City University by placing your hand on the gold star located on your right as you exit the stage. The original gold star stands as a point of honor atop the Gold Star Memorial Building, constructed in 1954 for the Oklahoma Methodists who were killed in service to their country. We invite you to celebrate this tradition at Oklahoma City University. The following graduates are receiving their Bachelor of Arts degrees from the Petrie College of Arts and Sciences. Gray Caton. Kaylee Elizabeth Pugh. Caitlin Chamnus. Anderson Foltz. <laughs> Natalie Griffin. Natalie Chapman. Laura Narve. Brandy McAllister. Danielle Frost. Katherine Hightower. Nathaniel Moling. Riley Meek. Thomas Lee Grosticlaus. Marianne Guadal Davila. Hudson Moore, Zachary Wayne Skates, Amy Nicole Smith, Vicente Martinez, Malaya Vaughn, Emily Wiley, Nora Ben Saif, Abdul Aziz Al Tariki, Yay! 
Patience Williams. The following graduates are receiving their Bachelor of Fine Arts degrees from the Petrie College of Arts and Sciences. Emily Baker. Matthew Hester. Casey Marks. Madison Moody. Michael Stamp. Cody Wilson. Yurong Zhao. The following graduates are receiving their Bachelor of Science degrees from the Petrie College of Arts and Sciences. <clears throat> Ronald Burkaw. Terence Bonome. Anna Braddock. Lauren Branham. Caitlin Brown. Lonnie Carbaugh. Brighton Cargill. Sarah Kaysen. Aaron Chapman. Jim Craycraft. Tamara Joanne Doherty. Felicia Ellison. Katherine Davis Evans. Brittany Williams Francis. Allison Fry, Haley Garcia, Lino Armando Gomez Jr., Jonathan Douglas Grub, Janae Haig, Audrey Harris. Caroline Hill, Amanda Lee Ingram, Carly Judkins, Jacob King, James Landall, Victoria Little, Serena Lopez, Emily McDougall, this is for the BA in photography, Jennifer Wilson, Sarah Brianne Massey, Judah Maxwell, Marshall McCabe, Vanessa Mendoza, Anna Brooke Mickish, Leslie Miller, Sarah Moore, David Mountain, Felicity Owens, Catherine Riley, Miguel Tovar, Alejandro Sepulveda, Sylvia Hayes, Jordan Kent Brannan. Arash Aliar.
Evangelina Simons. Kenzie Lynn Slothauer. Wesley M. Tomlin. Lindsay Elizabeth Trenary. Brittany Tripp. Victoria Ann Vaughn. Tatiana Vasquez. Ken Williams. Katie Lee Brooke Wilson. The following graduates, through a joint program with our partners at MDIS in Singapore, are receiving their Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science degrees from the Petrie College of Arts and Sciences. We are pleased to have these students join us for commencement. Shafika Abdullah. Vanessa Adeline. Akila Fusa Ahmad Riyadwan. Ang Tong Yan. Basova Elena. Monisha Chadranan. Lai Chonon Leon. Li Lie. Samantha Li Jiaying. Li Ongcheng Chan. Lim Ying Yi. Liu Jiaming Benjamin. Pavitira Morti. Noor Aini. Purnima Nadatur Baskar. Ying Chongang. Noor Nurasman. Corina O. Yanshan. Ong Lien. Kimberly Pereira. Magaswari. Jaslyn Purification. Harmit Singh. Jewel Tanja Yu. Teplokova Anna. Sedan Tupnis. Hamida Beham. Nicholas Vincent Chu. Chua Wun He. Shamana. Indeed, Nazmul Haik. Niraj Vimal, son of Haredesan. Ho Chi Hin. Nicole Yao Weilin. Lim Anru, Glenn Lin, Mohammed Ashraf bin Minhaj, Janani, Vanessa Jocelyn Rosario, Jaslyn Tay. Felix Sui Fei. 
The following graduates are receiving their Bachelor of Arts degrees from the Wimberley School of Religion. Jinu Wesley Yang. Michelle Shelley Owen. Morgan Mitchell. The following graduates are receiving their Bachelor of Business Administration degrees from the Minders School of Business. Awesome, Tessir Aletik. Kaylee Atkins. Ayman Al Sofyan. Reagan Barnes. Hunter Bingham. McKinsey Brown. Edith Bueno Moncayo. Matthew Chung. Lexa Bryn Crawford. Tamara Joanne Doherty. Mohammed Al Harbi. Madison Page Ellis. Spencer Gill, Caroline Grace Gooden, John Gorman, Brett Hawk, Fabian Henningsen, Jacob King, Garrett Holland, Ben Horn Harris, Caleb House, Ivan Yelenchic, Kendall Lance. Stephen Lashley, Edward Lonar, Holden Lyons, Lee Ma, Nicholas McKay. Misael Martinez Ochoa. Garrison Mendoza. Sui Nguyen. Anna Nguyen. Eric Dean Odom. Caleb Ogle. Lucas Hibero. Wyatt Robson. Karina Salazar Lopez. Derek Sievertson. Max Stewart. Nicholas Rhodes. Nathan Thaler. Sarafina Tran. Yasin Perona.
Zachary Dylan Travers. Shelly Wall. Mary West. Yom Jehok. Li Wong. Yi Jun Yu. The following graduates are receiving their Bachelor of Performing Arts degrees from the Ann Lacey School of American Dance and Entertainment. Paige Allowell. Shannon Bashirs. Abigail Branch. Chloe Brown. Carrie Brusso. Cynthia Edith Friars. Philip Giandoletti. Hannah Goodearl. Kayla Hendricks. Priska Lynch. Peyton Marie McAtee. Ellen Mulvihill. Tanner Fluger. Simeon Rawls. Jacqueline Schneider. Ashley Wallace. The following graduates are receiving their Bachelor of Science degrees from the Ann Lacey School of American Dance and Entertainment. Cynthia Bedford. Noelle Bradley. Jamie Buckley. Megan Elise Carter. Bailey Caves. Alexandria Louise Garden. Lauren Greb. Haley Guidry. Daly James. Jennifer Jones. Taylor Alexandra Jones. Samantha Lesher. Ira McCurry. Darcy McLassen. Alexis McPhail. Emma Miller. Philip Oliver. Joel Schmick. Isabella Jean Schmidt. Chelsea Michaela Dawn Schaefer. Ellen Elizabeth Sisley. Lindsay Summers. Halston Strange. Yeah. 
Morgan Wilson. The following graduates are receiving their Bachelor of Arts degrees from the Bath School of Music. Kendra Comstock. Megan Ewey. Hannah Ross Green. Thomas Harton. Lauren Holliman. Alicia Wonderly. The following graduates are receiving their Bachelor of Music degrees from the Bath School of Music. Benjamin Shelby Allen. <coughs> Cooper Baldwin. Audrey Rose Bollish. Liza Clark. Kelsey Day. Walker Degerness. Christine Ebeling. Victoria Earhart. Lauren Fanning. Stephanie Feeback. Sarah Feist, Matthew Flowers, Catherine Frazier, Spencer Gualdoni, Alexandra Aber, Sydney Marie Hughes, Sarah Kuhlman. Ryan Lambert. Sara Isabel La Paz. Gray Leeper. Yuli Alexandrovich Leontiev. Grace Ellen Lewis. Zachary Lutz. Sophia Macias. Brennan Margaret Martinez. Jennifer Morris. Carrie Neil Morrow. Emily Morgan Myers. Solve Neseth. William Jeffrey Newell. Virginia Newsom. Ashton Perrick. Haley Pickes, Erica Punch, Madeline Razouk, Taylor Ray, Jessica Victoria Salerno, Samantha Schneider Bayen, Kevin M. Taylor. Monica Joyce Thompson. Lauren Urso. Margaret Fogel. Elizabeth Wasson.
Carly Jo Witt. Kara Grace Winstead. Takayoshi Yago. The following graduates are receiving their Bachelor of Music Education degrees from the Bass School of Music. Jenna Miranda Applebaum. Michael Holliman. Angelica Pereira. Tyler Wade Stone. The following graduates are receiving their Bachelor of Arts degrees from the School of Theater. Hannah Ross Green. Emma Stone King. Evangeline Brittany Nicole Strasberg. Abigail Marie Troutman. Faith Jillian Weitzner. Alicia Wonderly. The following graduates are receiving their Bachelor of Fine Arts degrees from the School of Theater. Courtney Geneva Beyer. Aline Bradley. Braid Cole Bradshaw. Daniel C. Brown. Tyra Bullock. Megan Chu. Olivia Francesca Cinque Palmi. Hannah Descartin. Jaime Dimas. Callie Duncan. Haley Fortune. Toby K. Harrison. Travis Cole Huddleston. Allison Christine Hudson. Tucker Irie. Jordan Nathaniel Jacobs. Lillian Kennedy. Paige Emily Conker. Samantha Kenline. Kristen Kunz. Elizabeth Ann Larson. Donovan Marie Lawson. Jordan Lee. Patricia Lopez. Nick Mays. Kyle Jacob Mays. Dylan Scott Mobley. Allison K. Morris. Elisa Marie Pearson. Nick Plasco. Juliana Reese. Alex Rocha. Allison Shonoff. Caroline Stella. Alexandra Sutherland. Bradley Taylor. Haley Louise Uyang Tomlinson. 
Valentino F. Valentine. Julia Rose Waits. Isaiah Jeremiah Williams. Madeline Page Wink. The following graduates are receiving their Bachelor of Science in Nursing degrees from the Kramer School of Nursing. Besoit Abegas. Julie Elizabeth Adair. Lauren Barrett. Ashley Callis, Eric Ambries, Jory Brown, Kaylee Campbell, Eric Cloud, April Sean Coulter. Justin Cox, Tracy Davis, Shelley De Spain, Emily Fullerton, Caitlin Devine, Ashley Nevitt. Ashley Gallia, Joanne Gonzalez, Napoleon JJ Rivera, Matthew Gresham, Clinton Bo Grissom, Abigail Nicole Patchett. Rachel Ann Archer. <laughs> Catherine Marie Wicht. <laughs> Catherine Marie Krushke. <laughs> Mackenzie Taylor Wren. <laughs> Maggie Langford. <laughs> Stephen Lee. Lasha Merle Alexander. Desherry Ann Baldwin. Nika Aronye. Fatima D. James. Leslie Alicia Ochoa. Geraldine Ginda. Elizabeth Onsafunmi. Caleb Martinez. Shirley Conway. Julie Louise Mays. Lena Lai Win. Gloria Torres, Erika Ariola, Rachel Morales, Angela Kirkland, Ashley Stamper, Joy Henry. Timothy John Gardner, Alina Perez, Kathy Music, 
Lucas Richardson Walker. Tamisha Tobler. Mary Ross Deutscher. Amy Ramey. Tamara Sadler. Sonia Schuart. Betty Jane Weaver. Rehan Turson. Robin Yates. Kayleen Merritt. Elizabeth Post. Jennifer Wilson. Amanda Beth Stevenson. Alicia Patel. Tara Wynn Thorpe. Blaine Whitson. Danielle Reisner. Emily Watson. Heather Music Franchuk. Priscilla Vargas. Congratulations to the class of 2017. At this time, two Oklahoma City University students will take the oath of office, making a second lieutenant in the United States Army. The commission is a document attesting that the President of the United States, reposing special trust and confidence in the patriotism, valor, fidelity, and abilities of the individuals concerned, appoints them a commissioned officer. Victoria A. Little has successfully completed all requirements of the U University of Central Oklahoma's Army ROTC program and now will take her position as an Army officer. Second Lieutenant Little is receiving her Bachelor of Science in Biomedical Science. Nathan P. Thayer has successfully completed all requirements of the University of Central Oklahoma's Army ROTC program. And now will take his position as an Army officer. Second Lieutenant Thayer is receiving his Bachelor of Business Administration in Finance. Administering the commissioning oath is Major Paul Goyne, Assistant Professor of Military Science at the University of Central Oklahoma. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I am Nathan Bratchett Taylor. Having been appointed an officer in the Army of the United States, having been appointed an officer in the United States, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that I will support and defend that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies. Against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully Discharge the, duties discharge the duties 
of the office upon which I am about to enter. Of the office of which I am about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. It is a tradition in the United States Army to have a family member, loved one, or an individual close to the commissioning officer affix shoulder boards onto their uniforms with the new rank of second lieutenant. This is referred to as the first pinning. Second Lieutenant Little will be pinned by her father, retired Lieutenant Colonel Richard Little, and her brother, Nigel Little. Second Lieutenant Thayer will be pinned by his parents, Randy and Nancy Thayer. It is a tradition in the United States Army for newly commissioned lieutenants to receive their first salute from a non-commissioned officer who was instrumental in their training. The first salute is rewarded by the new officer giving the non-commissioned officer a silver dollar. Within the military, this first salute is known as the silver dollar salute. Second Lieutenant Little will be receiving her first salute from Master Sergeant Aldo Gonzalez. Second Lieutenant Little will report to her National Guard unit in Norman, Oklahoma during the summer. She will be serving as a medical service officer in the 700th Support Battalion. Second Lieutenant Thayer will be receiving his first salute from Master Sergeant Aldo Gonzalez. Second Lieutenant Thayer will report to Fort Benning, Georgia for the Infantry Officer Leadership Course, May 26th. We now present the Oklahoma City University Covenant. It is a pleasure to introduce the Vice President of the Student Activities Council who is graduating today with a Bachelor of Performing Arts, Shannon Bashirs, <laughs> University Marshal Terry Phelps, and Alumni Board President Chris Black, who will lead the Covenant responses beginning on pages 40 and 41 of your program. Faculty, please read with me. Just as parents raise their children to leave them, teachers hope to make their students wise enough that we become superfluous. A true teacher has succeeded when a student lives his or her education. We will have taught you well if you know that intelligence is important, but wisdom vital. Don't just go and do, go and be men and women of virtue. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Class of 2017, please read with me. We have learned much more from you than the syllabus covered. 
because you have taught us by example. We have learned that knowledge is power, but character is enduring. Thank you for not just doing your job, but for being our teachers. Alumni, we all once stood where you now stand, thinking mostly about the future. But as alumni, we know that the past is prologue to the future. Don't forget the gift that you have been given here. Find a way to give something back to this community that has given so much to you. We will not forget, as we join the unbroken line of OCU alumni, you can depend on us to think not just about where we're going, but where we came from. We pledge to honor Oklahoma City University and uphold the United Methodist tradition of academic excellence, spiritual development, and service to others. We are not just OCU graduates. We are now proud OCU alumni. Woo! Please stand for the benediction led by Morgan Elizabeth Mitchell, who has been awarded her Bachelor of Arts degree today from the Wimberley School of Religion. Then join together in singing the alma mater led by Audrey Rose Bollish, who has been awarded her Bachelor of Music degree today from the Bass School of Music. You'll find the words to the alma mater on page 41 of your program. Hear these words of benediction. God of dust and spirit, God of hope and love, God of new beginnings and times of dynamic, beautiful transitions. In this place, we have gathered to celebrate our growth in knowledge, understanding, experience, and community here at OCU. In gratitude, we celebrate those impactful times and spaces in which we have been encouraged and empowered to take another step on this pilgrimage this journey, this adventure. Now, as you are drawing us out of this place, each of us, inspired and filled by many along the way, long for hope and peace for ourselves and for those around us. Send us out, O oh God, determined to find this hope and peace, and determined to multiply it for those who are often forgotten, burden burdened, or marginalized. Send us out not with a thirst for flawlessness and fearlessness, but send us out with the messy, beautiful, hopeful spirit of love which you have promised to never withhold. Send us out to live whimsically, to live generously, and to live deliberately. Send us out to draw the circle of acceptance, freedom, and grace wide enough to include all others just as you have included us. With love, with peace, with hope, and with your presence, God, send us out. Amen.
We proudly present the Oklahoma City University graduates of 2017. Please remain seated for the recessional.